Hi. Well, as you box in with Frank Warren and Queensbury here at the Everton Red Triangle with the Olympian Peter McGrail. Hi, Pete. Sound, you know yourself. All good. Now, I was just reminded you a few minutes ago, of course, you wouldn't have remembered, but <laughs> the last time I saw you was at the show involving your team here at Grand Central Hall. Now, I looked up this morning, it was February 2020, right at the end. February we, 2020. We were just trying, we were just starting to get wind of a virus yeah. that was brewing up in yeah. China. Just before the qualified, that one. Yeah. 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 Or was it just after? Okay. No, it would have been just before, because I think yeah. I qualified in like. March, April, I think, that year. Yeah. So I qualified a few months after that. Yeah, because the qualifiers got canned in the middle, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, me, uh, me and Galal, we qualified, didn't we? Yeah. And uh, that was the last boxing session. And uh, a whole of family were down there, some, some of the lads. And uh, loads more were going to come down. And the day before, me qualifying fights got told. Uh, no, no fans are allowed in, obviously, because yeah. of all this, the, the virus and that. Mm. And then, before my fight, uh, the day, the day of the fight, they qualified. We we all got pulled to a meeting and that, and it was, this is the last boxing session. Uh, the qual the qualifiers are getting postponed, so we still got our chance to qualify later. Like. Yeah. I remember saying to you that night, you know, only the Olympians starting to get a little bit nervous. Yeah. We just didn't know enough about it at the time. Did nah, we? nah. We we waited for years, hadn't we? As well, like obviously me and the lads and the girls would stayed on from uh, Rio for the for that year for 2020. That was. Yeah. That, that was like the goal, 2020 was the goal, and then all this madness come about and that, it was just, uh, it was mad times, like. It must have been worse for you, because like, you went to 2016 kind of as the ball boy, didn't you? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So you, you you had the whole cycle. Yeah. And then to add another year onto that must have just been gutted, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, I was, uh, at the time, me and the lads and that, obviously, we were dying to go to the Olympics and eventually turn pro where we are now. and. Uh, to get told, look, you're gonna have to wait another year. We were all on the phone to each other, like, well, wow, what's going on here, lad? What, what, what are we gonna do in that? But it was a, uh, it was one of them. We, we, we all, we were all gonna wait. We waited four years, so another year. It was bad, but it's not a. Uh, it went the worst thing in the world, you know what I mean? Because it was a good, good experience. Because we didn't find out straight away that the Olympics was going to nah, get pushed no, back, did no, we? So no. I suppose you had at least three months of uncertainty, yeah. just without training. Yeah, it was. Not yeah. knowing what was going on. Yeah, well, me, me and Galal, we were lucky we, we qualified, you know what I mean? So we, we know we had our spot. Uh, we weren't sure whether the Olympics were going ahead in 2020, 2021. But then obviously we got told it's, it's getting pushed back a year, it's 2021. So, uh, Probably a bit easier for me and Galal because we had our spot secured, didn't we? So, yeah. And some of the lads they had to wait a whole year for, for to even qualify. So it must have been hard, hard and the girls. So it must have been hard for them. But uh, it was good. It was good. So was good. It was mad. But uh, the village and all that was a good experience. Was there any part of you during that first COVID year where you sort of thought, I can't be asked with this anymore. I've already put four years into this. Am I going to do another one? Yeah. Well. A little bit, yeah, but obviously when you speak on the phone to the lads and it'd be like, we've got to wait another year and that, you know what I mean? We all, we all wanted to go pro, so uh, sometimes you think she'll wait, but at that time, it was like, there weren't really any pro shows anyway, so it was like, what are you going to do, turn pro and then, and then train in the gym? Or by the time like the show started, it was around the time of the Olympics anyway, so it was a... Uh, it was one of them. Me and Galal were qualified, so it would have been uh, it would have been silly for me to go pro. Do you know what I mean? I had to, no, I have, to put in have so a shot at the Olympics. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, I mean, f first of all, you wait the year. Then the biggest moment of your life is something you're going through without your mum and dad there, no, without no. your coach there, yeah. all the people who would have been there yeah. to support you. Did that take away from the experience? Of it? Yeah, probably the experience was brilliant overall, boss memories with the team, the lads and the girls. But uh, over the years, I boxed all over the world and the family have been to China, uh, Bulgaria, all over Europe. Uh, my girlfriend's been out, Paul's been to watch me all over. And uh, for them not to be able to come over to Tokyo was, it was, it was hard, you know what I mean? Cause right, just picking up again. Um, we were just talking about the family experience of going to the Olympics and how it would have been like the culmination of yeah. something special for your mum and dad, wouldn't it? Like the glorious swan song to your amateur career. Yeah, well, obviously when, uh, when it was obviously uh, planned for 2020, 
the family had the booked on that. Uh, even before I qualified, obviously they must have had faith I was going to qualify. We all knew I was going to qualify, and uh, the family had it booked. Uh, some of my friends had it booked, uh, but obviously it got postponed, so they had to cancel it, get the money back. And uh, they were planning to obviously go 2021 because they've been all over the world. They've been to Germany, Russia, uh, not Russia, Germany, China, all over Europe, Bulgaria, Ireland, everywhere, all over the country for years. They've, like, they've been everywhere to watch me fighting. Uh, to get to the pinnacle of the amateur game, mm. and for them not to be able to come, yeah. like it was, uh, I was gutted. You know what I mean? Because it's obviously good memories for the family, isn't it? That mm. my, my mum and my dad and that, my brothers are proper proud uh, of what I'm doing, and uh, for them not to be able to come, I was, uh, I was gutted. But at the same time, I knew I had to go over there and just, and just box and and, and do do what I do. You know what I mean? Now then, the fight itself. Um it wasn't really you in there, was nah, it? Um, nah. I understand, but I don't know. You, you kind of took on the wrong instruction. Yeah, and yeah. You just weren't. You didn't box you. No, Is no. that fair to say? But yeah, it's basically spot on. Like, uh, come out, a bit eager, rushing the fight a bit. I've played this to, to the kids, and you know what I mean. He's a good kid. I'm not taking nothing away from mm -hmm. the Thai kid, Chai Chai, but he was a good, uh, good opponent. But I know myself. I should be beating kids like that. You know what I mean? Like. I'd believe myself to beat him if I was to go and box him tomorrow. Just, uh, just a little bit eager, got the tactics wrong. It seemed to have in my head, me and the team push the fight, go at him. And uh, it was the wrong tactics, you know what I mean? It's not really. I can box like that, but against other kids, it would have been better because he was a bit relaxed and was just picking me off as I was coming in. So when you're going, going you're in a three round fight, you're going down, uh, you're sitting down after. Um, first round, you're around down, so then you're chasing it then, so I had to chase the fight more. And it just it, it, it just was the wrong thing, you know what I mean? And I'll always be gutted, I'll always be devastated about that, because throughout the cycle, I was always up there, top three in the world, and mm. believed in myself I could have brought a medal back, but... You don't feel you've done yourself justice, no, do you? No, basically yeah. no, but at the same time, I'm still proud of what I've done in the amateurs. So you should be. Like, smashed it over, over the Olympic cycle, and the Olympics didn't, didn't turn out, but... What I've done stood me in good stead. I had my debut on a, one of the best builds in Liverpool for years, and I maybe might not have got that chance if I hadn't done what I've done in the amateurs. So I'm happy, I'm happy with what I've done in the amateur game, and just looking forward to the next ten years now with with, uh, with Paul and the lads. It's going to be a uh, if you if you kind time. of think about making a mad change of approach like you did. I mean, you'd think maybe you'd roll the dice in the later on in the tournament, yeah. you'd have semis or the and final long. or. You think you'd play it a bit safe yeah. in the early rounds, just get through. Yeah, and I always suppose, like, just, uh, as I said on the day, was going to the ring and had the wrong thing in my head. Go out and push the fight and just played into his hands. Just uh, where it meant to be, but the plus side of it is if I was in the tournament all the way, then I probably wouldn't have had my debut on that bill in Liverpool. And that, and they're uh, all taking their time, aren't they? <laughs> They are, yeah, yes, but I just, I come home a week after I got home, I got a phone call. There's a slot for you on the Fala, uh, BP Fala card. And it was like, it was a no-brainer, it just switched my mind frame. Obviously, I was devastated about the Olympics, still am, always will be. But just changed my mind frame, channeled my thoughts on to turn and pro, and just got excited about that, and I got the ball rolling on it in October, didn't I? So. How bad were you? Was there any talking to you at all? Was there anyone? Was there any talking to you at all, were you? Um, Silent and moody and just sort of devastated or were you sort of, yeah, are you quite philosophical? I was uh, I was gutted, you know what I mean? I'm used to like being, uh, over the years I'm used to being in the tournaments to near the end mm. and I was on the plane when people hadn't even boxed so it was, it was a mad one but then at the same time we'd waited a full year to, to, to do that and for the next stage so it was Mixed emotions because I was gutted, heartbroken because I waited five years to go there and I knew what I know what I'm capable of and didn't do what I was capable of. But at the same time, I knew what was coming. It was back in the gym with the lads, uh, turn pro, back home, back home with the family, not in Sheffield all the time, uh, back in with Paul all the time, which is obviously what I've missed over the, the five years of being in Sheffield Monday to Thursday, seven years, sorry being in Sheffield Monday to Thursday, so it was mixed emotions, you know what I mean? And as I said before, I'll always be, I, that, it'll always do my head in, the fact 
I went to the Olympics and under underperformed, but it weren't meant to be, was it? And I'm going to uh, smash it in the pros now, so it's one of them. If you think, though, if it wasn't for COVID, you probably would have had to stay out there for the whole thing, wouldn't you? Yeah, and, I know. And support yeah. the lads and go to the closing ceremony and you'd have been like two yeah. or three weeks and out And I there, still mightn't have had my debut on that, Phil. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That was uh, my debut. I'll never forget that. It was the walkout, just an arena full of scousers. It was uh, even just a fight week and that. It was the big, big fuss and that. It was, uh, it was special, do you know what I mean? All the crowd sort of still think of you as a scouse llama, do they? Yeah, yeah, they do, they do. That's what people, some people call me. It dep depends who you fight on it, you know what I mean? But the uh, footwork angles and uh, movements are to it and that, so, yeah. So as it stands at the moment, you had your debut on the... On 9th of October. Of Liam Smith card. Yeah. And you've got another fight on the 11th, because it's in Liverpool. But yeah. Other than that, you're just waiting to get yourself sorted out, just... Popping on shows. Yeah. As I'm, and when uh, as it stands. Yeah, so basically obviously I come back from the Olympics and then a week later I got a phone call. Uh, do you want your debut? There's a slot for you on that bill. So it was a no brainer, do you know what I mean? I had my debut penciled in. Uh, I've got another fight penciled in now, so I don't I'm not in no rush to, to, to get tied down to no one just yet, do you know what I mean? I'm happy getting fights. I've had one in October, I'm getting one in December and then just looking to be as busy as possible next year, keep building the record, gain as much experience as I can. And then uh, just obviously me, Paul and the team, we'll, we'll, we'll decide what, what's best to do. But all I'm focused on now is uh, December the 11th. Thinking of the, of the Olympians, I mean, it's, it seems to be a really slow process, mm -hmm. them actually getting started. Do you think they're losing a little bit of momentum? Because, I mean, Olympics was back then and, and you're still the only one that's yeah. made a professional debut. Yeah, it is. I, wouldn't, I don't know whether they're losing momentum. No, they're probably just wanting to get the right deal and making sure they don't rush into nothing, do you know what I mean? Whereas, that's where I was lucky, I got told you don't have to get signed to no one, you can get your debut on that bill. One of the best bills in Liverpool for years. Couldn't have asked for, for a better debut, really. I know I've, I've said that loads, but I literally, I literally couldn't have Eddie give me a boss slot. The two before the main fight, the arena was basically full. And, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a brilliant night, but I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the lads do, do you know what I mean? It'll be good to get on shows with the lads were, instead of boxing in Serbia or boxing in Russia with no one there, yeah. for us to be boxing in arenas, we're packed out, you know what I mean? To, to, you've got memories there all over the world and then we boss to have memories back home with, uh, with the team. What about the boys? I mean, they now really seem to be, I don't know, next year you get the sense, but it's going to be very big for all of them, don't you? I mean, you got yeah, Nick, it is, definitely. Who's been pushed forward for elimination of the yeah. British title. Andrew's going to do... Massive things, definitely. Like yeah, big fights been talked yeah. about for him next year. Brad's got his first stoppage. You're in a good little thing, then. A million percent. This is what like I've been waiting for for, for years, and then the COVID put me back another year. Like we've got, I've, as you said, Nick, uh, Andrew, Brad, uh, my little brother's just turned pro as well. He's on that bill, but uh, he's on your bill, yeah. Yeah, he's on the the eleventh uh, of December. Yeah. But yeah, th these are all on the verge of titles. You know what I mean? It's uh, the next five, ten years for us. Uh, for the gym, it's going to be, it's going to be a few belts here. You know what I mean? In, in a few years' time, it's going to be a lot of belts and the round of sparring that we have here. It's a uh, top, really top level. You know what I mean? And we're all bringing each other on. Tell me about training. Joe. Um, <laughs> little rumours, but he's a bit better than his big brother. Yeah, I hope he, I hope he's gonna, gonna be. You know what I mean? He's, uh, he's on his way there. Like he's, he's, what is he now? He's 19 now. He's a little beast. You know what I mean? Like sparring all of us. From, Punching our heads in, you know what I mean? He's a little, he's a little cumper. He's he not um, as technical as you. Yeah, he is. He's like an uh, orthodox version of me, but he's a, he's a little, he's a little spiteful cunt, you know what I mean? So I'm looking, uh, looking forward to December the 11th. It's gonna be a uh, boss for my mum and my dad, you know what I mean? It's all the family, the friends. Like I have my debut in the Echo. He's having his debut in the Echo, and he's having his debut when I'm having my second fight on the same bill. It's a uh, Good times for us, you know, not not just the family. It's good times at the gym. Like Paul's brought us up. He's we've been in here. I joined here when I was ten. Uh, our Joe joined when he was like seven. So he's been in here twelve years. I've been in here fifteen years. It's like uh, forgetting you're it's getting just, on a bit. It's now, just boss, isn't it? I know I'm twenty five now. Still think of you yeah. as like twenty. You know, it's because I do look a bit young, like. But uh, nah, we, we're just uh, we're just going to enjoy the ride for the next ten years, and it's going to be a good one. That's what happened to you. <laughs> And I don't mean this in a bad way, I make it sounds like it's a really bad thing, but yeah. 
what did happen to you essentially that time not lost but the time you spent on that Olympic cycle has that said to Joe nah not for me yeah it could have it could have possibly uh, he had the chance to try and go down that route or he had the chance to go pro and he chose he wanted to go pro do you know what I mean so I know he's going to smash it we're both going to smash it but we're all going to smash it in here so whatever route he did take he's always going to smash it he's a top top match fighter do you know what I mean so four or five years he can have 25 exactly you know? the, exactly what I've taught do you know what I mean I'm what well, I'm 25 now uh, one and oh he's going to be 19 one and oh so yeah, we'll see we'll see we'll see what, what what's better do you know what I mean I think and if in what where is he going to be when he's 25 do you know what I mean I want to know so yeah. it's one of them it's going to be a uh, boss journey I'm made up I'm made up he's GoPro because we, we instead of me being in here every day and him going to Sheffield mm. which what I done do he can now, we're in the gym together every day do you know what I mean and train outside the gym we're in the house every day obviously I'll probably get my own place soon but at the moment we're, we're in with my mum and dad and to, uh, I'm, I'm made up to, to, to be boxing on the same bill as him for, for, for his debut. Hey, so, um, thank you very much and congratulations on yeah. all your accomplishments so far. Thanks I mean, let's not, let's not forget European gold medalist. Yeah. First one ever from the city. And I'm all that. Belter, isn't it? You know, you got to every big tournament, like yeah. you say, virtually got to the finals or medaled in yeah, virtually yeah. all of them. Yeah. I mean, that last little thing is a bit of a bugger, but. It is, but it's, uh, it's one of them, like. I'm proud of what I've done and made up that I stayed in the amateurs because it's doing good bits for me now, do you know what I mean? Like, I, if I mean, I'm just saying, bro, I had about, must have had about 130, 140 and lost exactly. about 15, I mean, 16. hear about these Eastern Europeans and their 300 fights, and such an advantage yeah. over everybody it else. Is, it is, yeah. And they can come into the pros yeah. at like 30 yeah. and just I, sort I of smash everyone like up. At least yeah. you've got that. You know, million percent, yeah. behind you, you're still pretty yeah. young, so you've kind like, of got the best of both yeah. worlds. Yeah, now you have like the, the level, the level you're fighting at as well, and, mm. in uh, Cubans, Americans, Uzbekistans, going away, training camps, sparring. Like the experience I've gained being on Sheffield is priceless. That This is what I was saying to our Joe, I was saying it's good for your career to do that, yeah. but if you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. So we wanted to turn pro, stay home, stay with Paul, mm. and uh, get, get him with the lads. So, that, that's what he decided to do. What country is the toughest then? You mentioned your Cubans, Ukrainians, yeah. Kazakhs. Which ones toughest, were the spooky ones? Uh, the Uzbeks are tough. Just, we went on a training camp before, not before the young, uh, won the 27, mm -hmm. 2017, the Europeans, yeah, the yeah. gold. Uh, we all went out on a training camp there and uh, it got us ready, do you know what I mean? We were sparring number two, number three, number four and they were all, they were all, all boss rounds of sparring and uh, we went to that Europeans and we got like six silvers and like a gold, like the the, the record for obviously GB boxing. And uh, I partly reckon it's obviously because we were all good fighters, we were a, a good stock of fighters, but though, we were in Uzbekistan in the middle of the mountains, no signal on our phones, sparring, sparring, with the little beasts. It was, yeah, it was good, yeah. Top man, thank you very much. Sound, it's a nice one.